This is today's action man, ready to take up any position at your command. Now he's a sharpshooter whose head moves back to look right down the sights. Eagle eyes alert for danger, hands gripping tightly. He's a paratrooper, an Arctic soldier, infantry officer or frogman. Action man is who you want him to be. Who will he be tomorrow? Only you know. You and Action Man. Welcome to another video. So I know a lot of you are still locked down because of the isolation. I thought, why not try and make something to kind of give back to the community, really? So I just want to say what I've... Um, my currently my toy collecting situation has changed a bit, as you're probably aware from the previous videos. I'm kind of slightly downsizing. Basically, my toy room is going to become a spare room and I'm going to rent it out. Which means I need to remove all the toys out of the back room and find a place for them in my house. But unfortunately, I haven't got the room. So I will be downsizing my collection. But hopefully I will be keeping my action man collection. Or most of it. I've got loads of spares which I'm going to be selling on eBay soon. And through our Facebook page and their Instagram. But what I thought I'd show you today. Try and lighten the mood a bit. Have a bit of fun. Is my boxed um, uniform collection. So this doesn't include things like um, the Mission to Dragon Island sets, the SES sets, or the Talking Commander sets. It's just mainly boxed um, items, basically, boxed uniforms. And I don't have many of these because they're quite expensive. And the ones I'm after are more like the 60s and the early 70s ones. But um, I'll show you what I've got. So this is one. It's the very first um, 1960s astronaut. It comes in this lovely blue um, packaging. And if you notice here, they have the bullet holes in the Action Man logo. That would change as Action Man went into the, into the 70s. So it's based on the Mercury um, astronauts, not the Apollo astronauts. So the very first kind of like, um, you know, astronauts like Gus, uh, Gris, um, Gus Grissom, I'm pretty sure what his name is. The, uh, and those early kind of like Gemini kind of pilots, really. So it's made of like a tin foil sort of outfit, and the figure came in this box. The um, the figure, is, uh, the figure, the uniform you can see now has actually been recarded. Um, you, these are quite hard to find, brand new and sealed. They don't really exist. They came in like with a cellophane wrapper, and they all always ripped. As you can see from the bottom here, the stars are cut out. Now, if you didn't know anything about Action Man, um, Action Man had a mail away scheme where, on the front of action boxes and on the back of action boxes they had little stars and when you collected like 20 stars for example you can send away and get a free action man and to a lot of kids that was their, one of the only ways of actually getting action man because the actual figure itself is quite expensive now the figure comes with um, a few accessories so he has his helmet at the top this white cord here which goes into the plugs into the back of his um kind of like breathing apparatus unfortunately his um visor for his helmet's fallen down this glove has fallen off. This is not an action, actual Action Man figure, it's like a dummy figure. They used to put these little plastic cheap figures inside the Action Man uniform to give them that kind of like, um, you know, depth to the figure, make it look good on it on display. The figure comes with his, um, his camera and his propellant gun. Now that metal bar there is actually one of the most rarest um, things in the Action Man collection. It's actually fine. It took me maybe three, four years to find one uh, loose at an affordable price. They were going for 30, 40 pounds. Now I paid, I think I paid about 80 pounds for this, maybe maybe a little bit less, 70 pounds. The uniform itself is worth pretty much that on its own. The metallic looking um, uh, overalls is made of tin foil and it, it's very, very... Um, Hard to find one in mint condition. They flake quite easily. As soon as you get a tear in them, they will flake off like a, um, like a Kit Kat wrapper. Um, let's have a look at the back. So when Action Man was released back in the early 60s, they basically were based on the Action Soldier, the Action Pilot and the Action Sailor. Now they were, I wouldn't say it was an, a copy of G.I. directly, um, Action Man, but in the early years it was. So they originally had in G.I. Joe world, action soldier, action marine, pilot and sailor. Now we didn't get the marine in the UK. Instead we got the marine on like small cards, so accessories. We didn't get the boxes. Now on the back we can see Jackman soldier. 
he never came like that when he originally came out in, in a box. He came with only a pair of boots, trousers, uh, jacket slash shirt, if you will, and a cap. He didn't come with a gun. Action soldier, paratrooper, or marine, as we would call him in the GIJ world. He didn't come with anything, because he just came with a small card. He got the, the, a camouflage jacket, camouflage trousers, which is quite hard to get a matching pair. You can get ones from the 70s and 80s, but the original 60s ones are quite rare to find. Scramble pilot. In the pilot box, he was just an orange figure of a blue cap and some brown or black boots. I mean, no black boots. Then the sailor was, didn't, like, didn't like this at all. So they did do this as a figure in the, um, in the early 60s, in the mid-60s line. But he was basically um, a pair of denim jeans, if you will, a pair of boots, a blue shirt and a white cap. Now, after the um, 60s kind of ended, the Vietnam War ended um, in mid 70s. And by 1969, 1970, America had basically uh, lost faith in military toys. Space age toys have become a thing. And so adventure toys took over. But in the UK, it was a bit different. We weren't as um, disheartened by the Vietnam War because we weren't as evolved as much. And so the military thing did carry on. And so what Action Man did was produce one of the most amazing set of uniforms called the Ceremonials. The Ceremonials are the um, Grenadier Guard, the Royal Lifeguard, um, the Blues and Royals, the Lancer. They're some of the most beautiful um, um, figures and uniforms they ever did. So they were part of a range called the Famous British Uniforms range. And one of the ones they did they release was this one. Now this is the very first actual sealed card I ever got. And this is the um, Royal Air Force uniform. It's one of those uniforms where finding a mint uh, example loose is quite hard because it's got like a fluffy sort of jumper, like a work jumper I think it's called, a sweater. And it starts to deteriorate over time and it starts to fade quite easily. So there's the long trench coat. The hat is relatively easy, easy to find, but sometimes the badge can be missing. The boots are dead simple to find, but also the belt. The belt is unique to this set. But lucky for us, there's quite a few of these on the market. Um, you can pick one of these uniforms up for, in carded like this, for about £100. Uh, some people have been asking 150 recently, 160 But you can still try and find a bargain. I think I paid £100 for this one. I don't try and overspend when it comes to cards. Because when I overspend, I want to get the really good ones. I don't want to spend overspend and pay like £400, £500 for something like this. But I could get the ceremonials instead. But I really do. I like the REF. It's one of my favourite, um, one of my interests outside of the that toy world is like the Royal Air Force. As you'll notice, it's got the Union Jack. So in the States, they never had this as a figure in the G.I. Joe world. So the Union Jack was very unique to um, the Palatoy Action Man range. And this is when Action Man really took off in the 70s, because it really became a British toy as opposed to an American toy. Now we were celebrating British things and British culture and British um, the British services. So on the back, I'll show you Zaki Oss, you, you could have got. Unfortunately, they don't have pictures like they would do nowadays. But it says on the back all the famous uniforms you can get. The Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders with the um, Action Man wearing a kilt. The Parachute Regiment, always one of the best. The Grenadier Guards, which I think is one of the most iconic ones they did. The Lifeguards, Blues and Rolls. Royal Marine, Lancers, the British Officer and the British Royal Ministry Police. Look out for new sets in this series. So yeah, this is one of my um, probably my favourites uniform, especially when it's loose. Because when you have a figure wearing this, it looks absolutely smart, super smart. That belt is really tricky. I remember when I got my loose set, I found an absolutely mint pair of trousers and a mint jumper. I found the pieces bit by bit by bit, and it took me ages to find that um, that belt. I think I paid like fifteen pounds for it. It was really expensive at the time. The early stuff has actually gone down in price recently, I find. When I first started collecting the 60s sets, the grain carded sets with the original um, Action Man, say, Sailor, Soldier, Pilot, were like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But they've gone down, they're about 50% off what they originally were, which is crazy. So all the eagle eye stuff has become, in the 80s, has become the more expensive stuff now. Now I'm just a bit different. 
when the um, Axeman came out in 1966, in 67 and 68, they released what was known as the Soldiers of the Century line. The Soldiers of the Century line actually included um, a German stormtrooper, a British Tommy, a Russian uh, soldier, French resistance fire, Australian jungle fire, I'm going to miss one now, the Green Beret, which is amazing, amazing a figure, and it's probably one that I forgot, which I always forget. That's probably it, actually. So basically, they were um, based on World War Two, uh, and I think the Green Beret is Vietnam, and they were um, an absolute explosion in terms of toys. So they sold millions of them. They were so popular, um, especially the German soldier and the British Tommy. Like every kid had them, and um, it was one of those things where it really became what was kind of like the the, the golden era of action man, if you will, where but where. He went from basically being just a normal soldier to basically you can come up with a, a scenario now. And so the Soldiers of the Century line was so popular that in 1967, 1968, that back in the early 70s, they released it again, changed the uniforms around a bit, but called it Soldiers of the World this time. And this is a Soldiers of the World uh, small card for the German, for the German Stormtrooper. Um, it's quite a hard thing to find. There's a few out there on the market, but they're quite expensive. I paid, I think, the good price of £180 for this. Which is a hell of a lot of money when you think about it. What is his accessory set basically? You get the belt, you get the um, the Smizer uh, machine gun. You get the Luger pistol, you get the Iron Cross. And the back is very basic; it's just a piece of card. It's no, you know, no, no um, it's not fancy. But um, finding any between German carded is um quite hard to find. I'm really, really after, really, really wanting to try and get the um, Soldiers of the Century carded sets from the 60s, but it just didn't come up for sale. Hopefully, in the next couple of months, I might be able to have enough budget to afford one if I sell a lot of my collection off, which I'm going to do. My non Star Wars collection, no, sorry, not Star Wars, my non Action Man collection, I'll most likely be selling some of my Star Wars off. But I'm hoping to try and find the German Stormtrooper Soldiers of the Century card, the actual. Um, proper uniform set. It's quite rare. It goes for a lot of money. And I think I've only seen three or four ever for sale. Action Man is very different than, say, for example, Star Wars, where with Star Wars, if you wanted a original 12 back first release of Luke Skywalker, you just got to go onto a Facebook group and say, this is what I want. And they basically come, come out, everybody comes out the woodwork and goes, this is the money I want for it. But if you say to the Action Man community, I want this particular thing, Chances are nobody will come forward because they just don't have it. A lot of action stuff just doesn't exist anymore. Cardi stuff doesn't exist. Mainly because a lot of collectors um, like to get these things to rip them open. Now the problem about ripping open this set is um, you can actually get all these pieces for much cheaper than I paid for this card. So I'm not interested in ripping, open, ripping this open. I want it to preserve it just like it was so that people will know in the future if anybody wants to come and collect the toys they know exactly what this looked like. I don't want to ruin it for the future. But with Action Man stuff, as I was saying, you just cannot find it carded. Um, yeah, it's just it's hard to find. So these cards I have, they're more the common ones, and this is probably the rarest one I have. Um, they're more they're ones that you can find quite easily, but the other ones are so hard to find. Finding the, the footballers, for example, he, if you can find the, oh god, if you can find the Aston Villa set, you're talking like a thousand plus carded uh tottenham that's hard to find loose carded a thousand plus most likely there's a judo set they released a set of a, a like a judo figure with a, a gi i think it's called isn't it uh, with his belts and it makes like eight belts or something or nine belts and that's like 400 pound loose carded i think one went for like six grand about a couple of years back but there's another one i've known to sell I think he went for about two and a half thousand, which is crazy. Um, the Space Explorer set, if you can never find a Space Explorer set, there's, I think I've only know of one that survives, and I think I know of another. And I think they went for about two and a half, three grand, and if you ever find one, you can just ask what you want for it, because none, no, none of them exist. They're hard to find loose, so to find them actually like in, on a card, it's just near impossible. Um, 
the best thing about the 60s sets is the kind of 60s sets were so popular. So hopefully there are some out there, but it's going to take me years and years and years of collecting to finally track down those sets. I don't own any of them carded. Um, so I'm gonna, this year is going to be the year where I'm going to try and try and eventually get one in my collection. It'll probably be one that's been recarded or one where it's missing the stars. And here's the stars, for example, on this one here, which are complete. So that's me rambling on about 60s stuff. But yeah, let's carry on. Now, this is actually my favourite uniform, I think. It's very kind of boring, it's very kind of easy to get hold of, it's not expensive. You could probably pick up the whole thing cheap for about £10 if you're lucky. But on card, it's pretty cheap as well. This is the Action Man Tank Commander set. Um, yeah, it's quite a basic set really. Most of the stuff you can get pretty easy. The belts and gun and holster, that's like £12 usually on eBay. The jacket, on my one here has actually got like a red colour to it. It's got scratch on it as well, scuff. Um, it's like kind of weird, like a weird fading where it's like moulded, I think, where it's like moulding, deteriorating. And these will happen with toys, unfortunately. The, the, the rubber on these um, outfits will eventually deteriorate. But things like the boots, the binoculars, the gun, or the, uh, not a gun, is it? It's a um, flare pistol. Um, they're all quite easy to get hold of. So you can probably pick them up for £5 posted off eBay. I mean, you shouldn't really be paying for them for it. You'll, you'll find them at toy fairs. If you ask collectors, they'll probably send them to you for free if they have them. The, um, the, bat, the berry, you know, you, people pay up to about £15 for that, but you can probably get a little bit cheaper if you shop around. The jacket is, is cheap as hell. The trousers are cheap as hell. The only thing that's really expensive in there is this thing, complete. On the end of that is headphones. It has a very small piece of plastic, and they're usually missing. But apart from that, this is a very cheap set to get hold of. And it's even easy, it's even cheap to get carded. I paid £80, 80 pound for this. I really just wanted it because it's one of my favourite ones though, really. My favourite. It's one, It's quite iconic. If you're an Action Man collector and you collect Action Man job lots and you get hold of those, you know, bags and bags of Action Man stuff, like occasionally people do from like eBay and stuff or from collectors groups, you usually always find the jacket in there. Cool, let's have a look. So I've got it currently in this little plastic protective thing. It's a, it's a white box. These were originally being sold on eBay uh, to protect your action and boxes. And they're quite, um, they came up and they would sell out really quick. And so I never really got around to getting these ones, but I did get some different ones, which I'll show you in a minute. So back in the sixties, they released the cards um, on the wood, on the what's called a wood grain. It was similar to this, but it was very light in color. So this back in the seventies, they did it again, but in like a dark wood and yeah, it's basically supposed to look a bit like it's like a um imagine a bit like a um a footlocker sort of thing. The artwork is absolutely beautiful. I actually love these sort of artwork. It's just like a British commander on his tank. And at the time the Spartan um Scorpion tank, sorry, Scorpion tank was a tank that everybody wanted. And on the back has this amazing, amazing picture. You've got the tank, you've got the armoured car, the helicopter, and more impressively, one of the best things they released in the Action Man line, the Land Rover. Very hard to get hold of a Land Rover. They come up on eBay quite a lot, but finding them complete and unbroken is near impossible. The bumper always comes off. The um, the clips for the um, the tyre on the front, that can be missing. The lights are occasionally missing. The bumper on the back is always missing as well. Yeah, lo lovely, little, lovely little set, very iconic Action Man set. It's probably one of those sets where a lot of kids had it for Christmas because it's very much a case of, um, you know, everybody wanted the tank commander to put, go with their, their Scorpion tank. The Scorpion tank was one of the biggest sellers for Action Man. They sold thousands and thousands and thousands of them. So every kid needed a tank commander, and this is, this is the set to get. Let's have a look at some more. And when I first started collecting Action Man, I kind of, what I used to do is, and I love, I love talking about this because I'm obviously a bit of a nerd, but I used to think about this all the time when I was younger, because I, when I first started collecting. I used to work in a cinema, and when I was walking around doing my cinema checks in the morning, it was very boring on my own. I used to think about when Payday came along, what particular items I wanted to collect, and, you know, to complete my figures, and one of the things I really wanted 
was this. It was the US machine gunner set. Um, so, what I like about this set is, in the Axeman range, they did a lot of British stuff. And when it got towards the end of the 70s, I think this is 79, they started going back to doing a lot of American stuff again. US Airborne, they did a US um, infantry figure, they did... What else did they do? They did a lot of other World War II stuff as well, like the German Panzer Captain and stuff like that. And I, kind of, I always liked the, the Second World War stuff the most. So to get hold of this was quite cool. I remember I um, posted on a forum, on a Facebook group, saying I wanted to um, you know, get hold of this uniform. And a guy came forward and was like, I have it complete, minus the green um, scabbard for the bayonet. But apart from that, it was complete. And he wanted £25 plus postage. And I snapped his eye off, I can't believe it. I was like, yeah, definitely. It's not actually that hard to set to find. Um, the... The helmet's quite cheap, the jacket with the um, insignia on the side can be a little bit tricky to find that nice condition, but it's a very popular set so you do find it quite a lot. The um, the webbing is quite easy to find but fortunately the little clip there kind of snaps because it's made of like a soft rubber. The gun's quite easy to find, the scabbard's the hardest bit I think, and this little black thing here which is the thing that makes the gun swivel on its little um, tripod. That's always missing when you get these tripods, unfortunately. But you can get actually get reproduction ones if you're into that sort of thing. I'm not, but I'm not going to um, judge if you do. So when I saw this carded, I couldn't believe it. I was like, this is amazing. Um, I paid £125 posted for this one. And I'm glad I did. I love it. I love it so much. It's such a lovely set. And I love the artwork and I love it. It's got the stars. Um, I believe this set I've seen a lot of people um, who own these this um, series of, of cardi figures, cardi uniforms. I believe, this is my theory, that potentially there was a massive find of these about 20 years ago. Because they're all mint condition, or very good condition, and they're always like, particularly the same ones. You find a lot of these US machine gunner cards. There's lots of them out there. The police uniform is quite harder to find, I think. I think there's an SES one which is quite harder to find. But this one seems to be the most easiest one to find. Um, I don't buy uh, anything particularly because it's harder to find or rarer. I just buy it because I like it. But um, I've often thought about collecting this series and getting the whole lot. I think there's about 15 different cards altogether. Um, I know a few people that have got complete sets, um, which are quite cool. Um, but yeah, for some reason... I said that you know the early action man stuff in the sixties and seventies. There's not much out there uh, carded. Most of the carded um, uniforms you see out there, they go through collector to collector to collector, and you can kind of like sometimes see the trail. But these ones, there's actually quite a lot of them out there, and you can probably get this much cheaper than 125 pound. I've seen these go for about 70, 80 quid sometimes on eBay, if you're lucky. I think they're really nice. So these ones are called the Soldier series. As you can see just there. And it has the original sticker. That's a special offer, three ninety five. I mean, a bargain. Here's some of the other ones you can get. So you can tell this is 80s. So I think... I originally thought this was 1979, but it might be a bit later than that because you have the Space Ranger right for at the top there. You have the police, off, uh, police motorcycle uniform. That's quite hard to find um, carded for some reason. Um, whenever I find them, they're usually the cards quite, quite beat up. The British Infantry Major is quite a nice uniform. And the Frogman. And uh, I won't talk about the Frogman yet. You should probably guess why. But what I like about it is they now started to put pictures on the back and really show off the range of um, figures they do. The artwork is absolutely beautiful as well. And if you notice on the Action logo, the bullet holes are now missing. Yeah, absolutely lovely, figure, lovely, lovely figure. Another uniform, I should say. I wish I could get more of these series. I might eventually try and do it, try and track them all down. And then finally, for that same series, we have the Frogman outfit. And this is the orange Frogman outfit. So a little story about this one. I think I know where it came from. Um, back in 2000, I want to say 2016, 2017, there was um, what was called the Action Man 
uh, the Palatoy find, if you will. Somebody found uh, an, an elderly gentleman who was still alive. He was a rep for Palatoy back in the 60s and 70s, mainly from the 70s onwards. And he um, would get, get given samples of every, of every single thing they did. So that includes loads of Star Wars, loads of Action Man. And he would go around toy shops and go, this is what we have. Do you want to buy a crate of 100 or so? And what he would get given is anything left over, he just put up in his loft. And so his sons will get occasionally get a figure every now and then for Christmas or their birthdays if they wanted to. But when they grow old, when they grow up from it, they were too old for it. And so all this stuff just sat in his loft, including brand new sealed crates, like boxes of these figures, these outfits and other ones as well. And I think it might have come from that find. I'm not 100 percent sure. But this is the Frogman outfit. It's the same series as the previous one you just saw. Uh, it's got on the back. I think it's exactly the same. There, there you go. I'm not sure if this card is series had the Frogman in um in a black uniform. Black uniform was quite popular. Now the the worrying thing about these uniforms is, I try and keep my uniform uh, my uniforms, or my toys uh away from direct sunlight. I try and keep it a temperature where it's not too hot in the room. That's hard to do sometimes, especially when you got people like. You know, family and friends saying it's too cold, put the heating on. And because I've got a radiator in that room, it kind of can affect things, but I try not to put it on that much. You'll notice on this one, if you can see it here, the the hood of the figure is um, starting to blacken a bit. You can just see it on the, on the, it's a bit glary, but you're just about to see it. So what happens is, because it's made of rubber, the rubber deteriorates over time and it's starting to harden, which means that luckily this one would be okay for the next couple of years i imagine but if it was loose and being played with it probably would only last a couple of years for the whole thing would start to harden and it start to tear and rip and it'd be gone forever and so the frogmen were really really popular back in the 60s and 70s especially the early 60s early 70s ones they're really popular but nobody has them in their collection anymore because that doesn't exist all that exists is that bit and nobody wants to figure, you know, naked wearing an oxygen tank. Cause that's just weird. So it's kind of like, unfortunately, these things deteriorate and they don't survive anymore. Um, a lot of people will get these cards, take off the, um, you know, rip it open, get the, the uniform out, put it on the um, on the diver figure. <coughs> they would, um, you know, have, have it and have fun with it for a couple of years and then it would deteriorate. So that's why I'm keeping one on card. I'm trying my best to make sure it doesn't deteriorate any further than it currently is. It's been like that for now for about a year and a half. So I don't want to jinx it too much. But I think it's starting to go, unfortunately. Um, I try to, I do try and keep out of direct sunlight and in a cold environment, as I said just said. But you can't. It's you're fighting a, a losing battle, really. If you're interested to know where I get these protective cases from, like you notice there's a plastic case going around the box. These have come from a chap called, I think it's, I always get confused. I think it's Vam, a man, uh, a Vam man. Um, I'll put the link down in the in the um, comments in the button below. But he does basically protective cases for um, these uniforms, for the box figures, for loose figures and other accessories and stuff. Um, they're cheap. I mean, I think I paid about three pound fifty for this little protective box, and I think that was three pound fifty or four pound fifty posted. And I think the more you buy, the probably the better deal you probably get. Um, but yeah, if you want your action man restored, he also restores action man as well. Um, and they're great protectors for your for your uniforms because my with my collection it, it got so big with loads of loose stuff and cabinets filled of things. So once you put one of these in a cabinet, if it falls over, it just gives you a bit of extra added protection. So yeah, sorry I've rambled on too much. Um, I thought I'd just give you a quick little view of what I've got so far. I have quite a nice, or had quite a nice loose collection. And I'm hoping to show, show, show some of it off over the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, I think at the moment my actual collection is collecting. is kind of on the back burner at the moment. I'm not really sure how, where I'm going to go from here. It's quite, it's quite an odd situation because it's like... I've been collecting this since 2013, so seven years now. I started collecting when I was, how old am I now? 32, so that was when I was 25, 24, that sort of time. And 
it's been it's been really fun. I've met loads of nice people, loads of nice friends, and those like loads of nice collectors. It's got me into toy selling and toy and running my own, you know, doing my own toy shows with my dad. Um, we you know we are we are collectors and sellers now because of my love for vintage toys and mainly vintage action man. So it's a case of where do I go? Do I sell my action man collection and not collect anything ever and just buy and resell? But ugh, it takes the fun out of it, doesn't it? I love the history of these toys. I love you know stories of these toys and I love actually seeing these toys, especially like the artwork and stuff. So what do I do? A possibility is that I um actually have my attic loft converted out to like a storage area and have my own display room up there. I might might do that this year. It depends on um many many situa many things happening basically. But if I can get myself a lodger and I can get all this stuff up into the um up into the attic and convert it out with some nice um you know windows and nice airflow to make sure these toys don't get decay, then it might be a possibility. I might actually make a whole action man room up there, just dedicate it to action man. My own little um my little sad cave really. But yeah. So yeah, a bit, of a bit of a strange situation currently, but hopefully it should be a good one. And as soon as, as soon as I'm over this kind of like bump in my life, I can go back to collecting again, and I can go back to getting some of the more harder to find figures and, and uniforms. I might treat myself to um to the, the German uh, Stormtrooper outfit if I can find it, or the British Tommy outfit if I can find it, um, which would be quite a lot of money. But I'd be selling some of my collection to um other other toy lines to um compensate for that. So maybe you might see a few nice things. Um, yeah. So, um, yes, yeah, keep watching. Thank you very much for subscribing. And I'll try and make some more videos with my Action Man collection. I've got loads of Action Man in a drawer. Um, which I'll give you a bit of a, a bit of a um, sneak peek, shall we? So I have drawer... You have the drawer. Of action stuff. Including Japanese stuff. Which is pretty cool. So yeah. Thank you much for watching again. And I'll speak to you soon. And thank you much for um you know, thank you for like subscribing. We get a lot of people say hello on the youtube channel now and comment which is amazing i didn't ever think that would ever happen so yeah thank you very much again i hope you're dealing okay with the isolation i hope you're having fun seeing your family and friends still you know via web chats and different things yeah have a good night have a good day whatever you're doing see you later